when to yeah. start. <clears throat> All right, good morning. Uh, this is the time and place for the planning hearing officer hearing of December 16th, 2015. Uh, my name is Roger Kiesel and I'll be the hearing officer. Uh, we have one case on the agenda this, this morning and relevant exhibits are posted on the panel uh, located directly behind me. Uh, there is a variance case. Uh, if, um, I'm sorry. Under the provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30.43 of the Glendale Municipal Code, a variance shall be granted if four findings, four required findings, are present. The first finding is that the strict application of the ordinance uh, would result in practical difficulties or unnecessary hardship inconsistent with the general uh, purposes and intent of the ordinance. The second, that there are exceptional circumstances or conditions applicable to the property involved on or or to the intended use of the or development of the property that uh, do not generally apply to other property in the same zone or neighborhood. The third, uh, that the granting of the variance will not be material or detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to the property or improvements in such zone or neighborhood in which the property is located. And finally, that the granting of the variance will not be contrary to the objectives of the ordinance. Findings. If the findings are present in the application and at the hearing, um, uh, and at the hearing meets the criteria just described, uh, then the planning hearing officer can either approve or impose conditions for approval on the case in question. If the findings of fact are not evident, then the request will be denied. Public notice. Notification of this hearing was accomplished by the use of public notices, which were mailed to property owners located within 500 feet of the subject property, physically posted on the site in question, and placed in the local newspaper. The hearing will proceed as follows. I'll read the uh, description of the application or request. Then I'll read uh, the reports received from other city departments or other letters. The case planner will make a brief presentation of the case and give analysis and make a recommendation. Uh, the applicant will then be uh, asked to come forward and, and speak, stating both name and address and presenting uh, their case within a 15 minute time period. Uh, others in support of or in opposition to the application and interested parties will be asked to come forward to speak uh, within a three minute time period. Finally, the applicant will be given the opportunity to make closing comments um, if desired in response to testimonies given by the um, previous speakers. And then the hearing will be closed and taken under submission. Uh, the decision. After the hearing, the decision will be, prepared, will be prepared in writing or will be in the form of a letter sent to the applicant and all persons who responded to the public notice, either by speaking at the hearing or by submitting written responses and have provided their names and mailing addresses. The date of the decision will be the date appearing on the letter. Appeals. Under the appeal provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30.62 the Glen, of the Glendale Municipal Code, the decision may be appealed to the Planning Commission within 15 days of the date of the decision. Anyone wishing to appeal may obtain uh, forms or brochures on the procedures from um, the Building Safety Section Permit Services Center located on the same floor of this building. Speaker cards, if you wish to speak, if you wish to speak, please write your name and address on one of the speaker's forms, which have been provided by the front door, and submit it to our planning assistant, Mr. Danny Manasarian. Um, I would like to inform everyone that the official proceedings of the planning hearing officer hearing are recorded um, as part of the public record. Um, if uh, the case planner or Mr. Manasarian could give me a Agenda, I can read the case. I forgot to. Thank you. Okay. 
We have one case on the agenda, as I mentioned before. It's located at 3615 Ensignal Avenue. It's variance case number PVAR 1523208. And the applicant is John F. Cutter. The case planner is Milka Toledo. And the project description, uh, what the applicant is applying for, is a variance to allow a floor area expansion to an existing uh, one-story single-family residence while not providing the required two covered and enclosed parking spaces. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's the project is located at 3615 Ensignal Avenue. And why don't we start with the case planner um, sort of brief overview. Now, thank you, Mr. Kiesel. As you stated, this project is located at 3615 Ensignal Avenue. It is zoned R1, floor area ratio district two, and that would be the zoning surrounding the property. There's single family homes in this area. A staff is recommending a, to approve the project with conditions. Uh, the applicant's proposal is to construct a 544 square foot addition to the existing single family house, which is approximately 1,004 square feet and they will not be providing the required two-car covered in, and enclosed parking garage. Currently, the house uh, does have an attached 250-square-foot substandard garage. Uh, at most, it could potentially fit a one small car, possibly two in tandem configuration based on the depth. The depth of that existing garage is approximately 32 feet deep and 10 feet 9 inches wide. However, there is a portion of that garage in, as it relates to its width that is slightly reduced to 9 feet 3 inches due to an existing uh, chimney that's located in that area that um, protrudes into the garage. But it's actually the chimney in the house. Um, the applicant, the 544 square foot uh, includes 32 square feet at the front of the house um, in the front entry area, and the remaining would be 512 square feet, and that would be at the rear west side of the house. Uh, that would be consisting of bedroom, bathroom, and closet. The existing conditions regarding the site constraints as to why an addition or expansion of the existing garage or even proposing a new two-car garage is not f f feasible is primarily due to few reasons. One of them, which is a unique factor related to the property, is the fact that the existing oak trees, specifically one that is literally up against or abutting up against or the roots and the canopy of that existing garage, it would pr prohibit or is, does not make it feasible to enlarge or expand that existing garage without undermining the roots of the trees because the tree would be compromised or even potentially compromising the existing garage once if you do remove the tree, which is protected by law, um, again, you would compromise the garage. You may have to potentially end up removing it because obviously it's a mature tree. You have significant root growth underneath uh, the, the existing garage. Other alternatives, which the applicant has explored and perhaps will be um, explaining and what staff observed was that if they were to expand that existing garage even with compromising the tree they're only going to potentially gain two feet at most because they have to maintain a four foot interior setback um, so that in and of itself makes it somewhat it doesn't seem totally realistic to do and the other option would be potentially creating a, a 90, 90 degree turn at the front, but then you would compromise, again, existing landscape and potentially setbacks. Uh, those are some of the site constraints that staff uh, was able to, to see related to the property. And of course, at the back, it's, it's angled, so that again makes it difficult. Uh, it's a small yard at the back, again, site constraints that, again, make it very difficult to propose a 
uh, an expansion at the rear of the existing uh, garage. So based on that, staff has prepared some findings that staff's recommending uh, in favor of the proposal. If you'd like me to go over them, if not, that would conclude my presentation. No, I don't think we need to go over them quite right now. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm going to go over, I'm going to review the comments from other departments. Um, building and Safety just had their standard comments. GWP. Standard comments. No comments from engineering. <clears throat> or neighborhood services. Or integrated waste. Or maintenance services. Okay, so really no comments from other agencies. Uh, I'd like to ask is it Jenik um, Dom Brawa to come forward and um, speak. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Yannick Dombrova. My address is 506 Santa Monica Boulevard, Suite 210. California 90404. Thank you very much for hearing this matter and thank you staff for preparing your report. Uh, the one item I could add in addition to the tree and the constraint, constraints of the geometry of the, of the parcel and the position of the building on the parcel, there is a significant slope between the street and the garage. Approximately 42 inch slope uh, ascending over the 20 some foot front yard and then flattening out. So we considered extending the garage, but as a staff indicated, the width of the garage is compromised by the protrusion of the chimney. And so the result is really problematic. Um, turning the car 90 degree to, to the driveway or parallel to the street is prob a problem as well. So we want to thank staff for working with us and for preparing their support. Um, can you go over the various options that you explored? Certainly. And and um, why they weren't feasible? And you can come up here okay. if you want. Uh, thank you. Uh, we explored uh, removing the garage and uh, parking two cars behind the building. Uh, the problem with that is that the building is, the geometry of the building is such that if you get to the back, uh, you do not have enough backup uh, so if the cars are in that open courtyard at the rear of the building in that area. So removing this. Correct. And, and using it as a driveway here. and finding a way to bring light into the building. Okay. Uh, you could solve that problem, but you cannot solve the backup problem. Okay. Uh, the 90 degree parking in the front yard was considered very briefly, but uh, that's, that would be in the front of the building at the bottom of the page. Mm-hmm. Correct, right in that area. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is there's, again, not enough width uh, for a full parking stall, and backup is a problem. So the last uh, option we explored is the, the one I mentioned at first is the tandem parking, but the slope is so severe that we would either have to regrade the entire area, correct? Here. Exactly. Okay. So we would end up regrading the front area, uh, impacting the, the tree root ball. And uh, I don't know what the impacts of the tree would be, uh, but it's an old tree and it's as much a part of the house uh, as anything else. So we decided that really the best thing to do is to leave that site alone, uh, try to concentrate the new addition in the, the longer portion of the lot and increase the entrance a little bit because there's a very difficult uh, placement of the kitchen. There's an existing kitchen there that's very jammed up against the exterior wall. Where is the oak tree on this side? Approximately right there, right where, correct, right there. Okay. All right. So it's a, it's a beautiful and picturesque site, but difficult and accommodating. Okay. Um, do you want to go over the variance findings? 
Uh, yes, please. Okay. Ah, um, so I, I think uh, staff is correct that not only the geometry of the parcel, but the um, specific position of the tree, the age of the tree, the size and scale of its crown and its root ball uh, make it almost impossible to really do anything in terms of parking. And uh, I think the size and scale of the of the addition uh, is consistent with the neighborhood. If one looks at an aerial photograph of the area, uh, the lot is um, unusual in its geometry because it's close to the end of the city block. And during the subdivision, the parcels were cut up in sort of an odd configuration. And that's visible on the on the vicinity map, the yellow. Uh, there are several buildings in the area that are two stories. Uh, we did not explore the two-story option because it would really be so significant. And the tree, again, is impacted. We would have to move everything away from the tree. So we thought that as long as the house has a reasonable balance of living space, sleeping space, bedrooms, and can exist with the parking as is, and it has for a long time, that, that would be really the best thing for the neighborhood. Okay. Right. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Um, I don't have any other questions. I'm assuming you don't have anything else to say or else you would have said it. Um, anything else from staff? Nope. Okay. So I'm going to uh, close the public hearing. Uh, I'll render a decision shortly. And um, I'd like to end the meeting. Thank, Thank you. All right.